Thank you. Apologies for the confusion. Uh, okay, I'm beginning. Is it possible to film as if caressing? How would it be to film with the body? How would it be to film as Cal Clarice Lispector writes? These were some of my initial questions when I began the inquiry as exploration that I'm presenting today. This inquiry translates to the visual art some of the main features of the unclassifiable and fascinating literary work of Brazilian writer Clarice Lispector and how her work has resonated with me. This presentation focuses on one work, is titled Viviendo el Día, uh, in English, Living the Day. Uh, and this work stems from my artistic investigation in which I have been working since 2017. And uh, this work uh, or this investigation states an intermediate encounter between reading, filming and installation practices. Viviendo el Día uh, is an immersive moving installation that disables the possibility of a single privileged view. Videos of a walk with a group of dogs are projected on various screens in a fragmented manner. This installation multiplies and combines the images of the walk uh, and create an environment a network of relationships between humans and non-humans that explores new ways of relating to reality and invites the viewer to participate and engage with living environments. This site-specific uh, installation was made for an historical space. In, uh, uh, it was uh, historically a water reservoir uh, and it was in the north of Spain, in Vitoria Gasteiz, and I made this work in 2018. For a few years, I have been working on an artistic research that brings in some characteristics of Lispector works into the visual arts. I wanted to activate some elements of her writing, letting her write, writing resonate with me first and then in my work. It all started with baby steps, intuitions and questions, and it has been growing since then. I wonder what it would be like to film with the body, if it would be possible to film as if stroking, rematerializing vision through touch, if it were possible to film the whole life, how Lispector writes. Ellen Sisu has highlighted that Lispector writes with her body. The proposition filming what the, with the body was one of the points of, depart, of departure for my work. Even before I knew I was going to, to make, I was going to make a multi-screen video installation. Uh, kind of the the first the first book I read by Lispector uh, it was her chronicles they they were they were chronicles that were published in newspapers and um, emphasis is put on a corporality sensing feeling touching that is not confined to the limits of the so called human bodies. Uh, in the Chronicles, these light impressions open out the question of the human by considering models, models of extension, interconnection, exchange, and unraveling. And this connects with a feminist uh, materialism concept. Literary scholar Mariela Mendez has highlighted that Lispector destroys the heteronormative and heteroreproductive reprodu narrative. And specifically, referring to the, to the Chronicles, she states that the inspector is more interested in the being than in the making. She is more interested in sensations, feelings, affects, and ways of being in the world, more than in what is understood as an event 
the inspector chronicles set up a new way of being in the world in which the outside world is not there to be studied, observed, and understood. Uh, kind of as, as examples of, of something that she writes in the Chronicles. For instance, she says, uh, she says that she uses intuition for writing, that she uses intuition and instinct, not intelligence, and that when writing, uh, uh, that she's following herself, even when without knowing uh, that where will that take her. her. How affect ran in my experience of reading? For me, reading the specter is something close to feeling, which requires reading in a conspirational involved manner. Reading Clarice is transformative, transformative by operating beyond rationality. Lispector's potential narrative enables an exploration of the unknown and makes readers become human, as Ellen C. Su points out. For many years, I have frequently turned to Lispector's unique and unclassifiable work as a sort of celta, mainly at night, in bed, before sleeping. I couldn't really grasp grasp what happened to me while reading her, uh, but it was comforting. And although sometimes there was certain uneasiness too, an affective an affective force force affect operated in my experience of reading Lispector. With Lispector, I felt reading Lispector made me connect with something. I didn't know exactly what. I didn't understand what happened on an intellectual level. For me, that reading was a way closer to feeling than to understanding. For writer, artist, and artistic researcher, Emma Cocker, affect is necessarily apprehended from its myths. And she also, uh, points out that affect speaks of a different reality to what each name unknown. It is an intuitive realm of flows and forces, of gradients and intensities, of transitions and relations, which the body senses all too well, yet comprehension struggles to make sense. Uh, Emma Cocker has studied the, the affective power uh, or, or the affective potential in reading. And uh, at one point, uh, I decided that I wanted to explore the, this affective force uh, in my artistic work. I wanted to find ways or to recreate this affective force in my, in my visual arts, in my projects. Uh, and what caught me was how Lispector writing insists on the extraordinary of the of the everyday and how it transforms the ordinary into something extraordinary, and how Lispector questions binary categories, I and other, language and silence, human and animal. For Lispector, humans have never been at the center of the world. The specter writes about and from the limits of language, passes words beyond their limits, breaks grammar, breaks grammar rules, and plays with the sonority, even with the visuality of words. Okay. I'm going to share now this video. It's a video documentation of the work.
exploring the relations between vision and body, vision and touch is a fundamental issue in my artwork that emerged from, from the very practice. Haptic visuality is based on proximity and it attends to textures more than forms. A vision that tracks and or touches. My work is about thinking, making with images, with the body and with cameras, experimenting with cameras and the various image production and reproduction devices and media, including screens and the exhibition space. This is a fundamental part of my work and the body is at the core of these explorations. I'm interested in touching images and in technology as well as in presence. I experiment with ways of generating images from and with the body. I research how touching images could touch and affect, could touch and affect us. In this installation, there was a search for a living, open and ongoing relation. The proposition of filming with the body would, would be a form of sustained engagement an ongoing being in the world life. This will entail putting attention to the transition from a representational model to a performative one in which the new forms of action, relationship, and practice generated by, by, by images must be explored. In doing so, the idea of reality as something passive and available is questioned, and the approach to subjectivity as something stable that can fold inward. The real is composed from an interrelational, interrelational game between resistance and adaptation, in which human and non-human beings, objects, technologies, phenomena, and environments participate. In this game, the image is not the point of arrival, but it plays an active and open role. Being in the image, means losing the security of a unique position from which one can assume that the world can be seen and organized from a privileged distance. Um, I'm gonna go a bit faster, but... You have three more minutes left. Újabb probléma. Úgy tűnik, hogy lefagyott. Because it already lives and acts in the world. Um, in Viviendo el Día, I poeticize this experience by multiplying and combining the images of the work in such a way that subjectivity is performed and, pres and presented as an engaging, sensitive, and embodied process. In this work, neither the image nor the screens are refugees for self-absorption. Instead, they are active entities that challenge the fantasy of a well-defined defined border between subjectivity and the world. Um, and For Rosy Braidotti, the post-human is not only a mode of critical thought, but also a, mod, a mood for affective, affective belonging. It introduces a multifaceted affective turn that combines emotions usually held as opposites. Nostalgia with passion for utopian visions, the politics of life itself with the spectra of mass extinction, melancholia with anticipation um, and uh, for uh, Eugene Brinkema um, uh, the affective tan has a performative dimension that emphasizes the personal experience uh, that is preserved um, at the core of humanism so there would be a connection or a way of connecting uh, affective intermediality 
uh, with humanism. And uh, uh, in the images of the dog that we have been seeing jumping, uh, for me, for instance, this uh, in, in this work and in this installation, they, they contain this idea of, of joy and affect in a very powerful way. I don't know if it has it, it has been seen when you were watching the, the documentation of the work. Um, uh, and I connect Braidotti's affirmative ethics with a life affirming ethics that I find in Lispector's work. As noted by Braidotti, Lispector, uh, sorry, Spinoza reveals that sadness does not turn us more intelligent or capable. On the contrary, sad affects reduce our potency to act. A, de a defense of joy would be a subversive act. A defense of joy from a contingent and situated perspective, capable of increasing the desire of taking care of us and getting affected by joy. By joy. An affirmative ethics can only be based in desires and in the modulation of the intensities of these desire, desires. By Braidotti's approach is rooted in an understanding that the life I inhabit is, is not mine, but it belongs to a relation of interpersonal forces generators of becoming with an stabilized purpose. For Spinoza, all living beings are different, but they partake of the same life principle. To be human is to become aware of the other. Uh, and here I'm concluding. <laughs>